afternoon, everyone, and welcome to an update here of Apple. I am doing this because I haven't done an, an update on Apple in a long, long time. And I know a lot of people think Apple's going to rally. I know a lot of people think Apple's going to go back to 550 or beyond. That is not how this is setting up. Now, let's just go over this. Actually, let's just go over today first. Market gapped up today. Apple gapped up today. Market made new highs this morning, and Apple did rally. But it really didn't have any significant buying coming into whatsoever. It was almost like it, it did everything it did this morning very quickly with the market, but still was dead as a doornail. In fact, it was so dead that I said this is actually a short. I said that this morning in the trading room. <laughs> and um, I know some people wanted to buy it. And I said, this isn't a buy. It's a short. It's still a short. It actually looks beautiful now. It's a short. Let's go over this. Pretend you didn't see it. Boop. Pretend you didn't see what it's doing right now. Pretend that it's not there. Apple gapped up. Gapped up over the 50, over the 20, over the 8 premium moving average. Gapped up. Gapped up of resistance. Gapped up and rallied this morning with a bullish market. And then people are thinking that everything's rosy and beautiful and fabulous in Apple. But it's not. Apple is in a downtrend. Apple is in a downtrend and still in a downtrend. Today's just confirming everything with itself, and everything Apple does is confirming itself. I did talk about this about two months ago or something. It was in January when Apple had the earnings. And my call for Apple on the earnings was that it would gap down. I said there was a possibility it could gap up, and if it did, it was an immediate buy at $600. When Apple did not play out that way and gapped down, which I thought that it would, and followed through in the continuation of the overall trend, I said this is very important for Apple, this gap, and it was an important gap for Apple. The fact that the stock has rallied over the gap and rallied back here and was over the 50 and did all this stuff in here really is not significant for what's going on here overall. The significant was that the gap itself could have made a correction on this day to be back up in an uptrend, and it failed to do it. That was a telltale sign that Apple's lower, which it still is lower now. I never did anything saying that it wasn't lower. Okay? So... This is not one of their stocks that you should be long in overnight. It's a short. The interesting thing is when somebody brought up the question in the trading room today about taking Apple overnight short to 550, you know, I know a lot of people do this. They take overnights, but they're doing like scalps, like scalp trades in overnight positions. That's deadly. It's deadly to your account. It's actually dangerous. And, and it is my belief system. Take it for what it's worth that no one should take an overnight position in a stock or the market unless they know how to read gaps. Gaps can happen at any time, at any given point in time in the chart or life of the market or a stock, and if you do not know how to correctly read the overall trend in something, then you can't be in something overnight. Gaps tell you how to read that right, how to read the overall directional bias and the trend in something, and if you are against the trend doing it overnight for what you think is going to be a move that it makes, like a scalp, quote-unquote, scalp trade, it's dangerous because it could go against you lickety split and it could wipe you out. And so that's why you don't buy Apple here. It's in a downtrend because you could get up tomorrow morning and Apple could be at 450 and it wipes you up. So the thing to do is to trade the trend in a stock or the market. And the trend in Apple's down and it continues to be such. This is going to be one of the best uh, calls I've ever made because no one that I know is calling Apple in this manner, in this fashion, to such a huge target to the downside like I've been. And this, this isn't doing anything wrong. It hasn't done the deeper move back down yet, but in my mind, this has done the confirmation in the lack of the correction that happened back in the earnings gap from January. That's not to say that Apple couldn't correct itself the next time it reports in second quarter of 2014. It could. It certainly could. I don't know when the data that is. It's probably in May or June or something. I have to look it up. Might be April. But either way, it's not right now. So Apple is not a long right now. Apple hasn't been a long for a long time. Okay? So take note of that. When you are looking to do overnights, you are looking to stay with the trend. It's the best thing you can do. And there's no guarantee when that happens that something won't gap against you. But that being said, you can fall asleep at night at least cozy and warm and snug on your pillow knowing you're with something with a trend and you're getting paid. When you take an overnight scalping something against the trend, it doesn't have high odds of follow through and it's not a good trade. If you bought Apple here, down here somewhere in the $400 range for a quick move back up here where it got to around $500, could you have made money? Yes. If you did it, did you make money? The answer is yes. It doesn't mean it was a good trade. There's lots of times that you could take a trade and happen to get paid and it doesn't mean it was a good trade. And this is the thing. This is the thing. This is what people just don't get. 
Just because you do something and you make money doesn't mean it was good. And the problem is many people go after stuff again and again and again and again that they think is the right thing to do because one time they made money in it or maybe twice. And maybe they had a big day on the day that they actually did the thing that they did that they made money. But it was a bad trade. And unfortunately, the market allowed them to profit from it. So then they continue to repeat it. But don't you see that's the, that's the beautiful thing about the market? That's the allure of the market. The market will pay you sometimes even if you do a bad trade. And then the market sucks you in to take bad trade after bad trade to get back the money you made in that one trade you took profit. It was a bad trade. You should have never profited from it. But because the market allowed you to on that given day, you take 10 other ones in the same way and lose in those. You get back all the money for the one good trade you did, and you keep trying to do the same thing to replicate the trade that was a bad trade in the first place, even though you made money in it. That's the thing. How do you know when something really works? Well, it's easy. I can answer that question very easily. You're able to consistently use it. Consistently meaning day after day after day, week after week after week, month after month, and year after year. And not only that, regardless of market condition, I am shorting professional bearish gaps ever since I taught myself how to do this in a bullish market. Regardless of market condition, when you have something that works consistently, it works. It works in any market, in any time frame. It works in any stock that exists in the market when it sets up according to the rules and the guidelines, which I have set for myself in the system that I alone created and teach now. It works regardless of market market conditions. It works in any stock as long as it rates and sets up, and it works consistently, and that's how you know it's good. Okay, this idea of trying to pick bottoms and stuff or take overnights for scalp trades is deadly to traders. I'm trying to talk people and tell them, listen, do something with the trend. I don't know why this is so hard for people to accept, but you got to do it. You've got to do it with the trend. Apple's in a downtrend. There's Apple is a short, a short, a short. It's not a buy. And if it one day becomes a buy again, I'll tell you exactly what it is. I'll see it the moment that it does it. I'll see it the moment that it does it in a bullish gap, which has not happened here yet. This chart is not corrected. Okie doke. So this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. An update on Apple. Apple's holding beautifully. This lovely little top and tail with the red little body in here is squished down in here on this. Apple should fall through tomorrow lower. If the trigger's here in a daily sell setup, we'll see where it goes. Apple may just hang around and bounce back and forth in here until it's ready to break again and do something significantly bearish. We'll have to see. If this goes back into an uptrend, I'll see it the moment that it happens. But right now, it's in a downtrend. Okay? So whether or not it rallies back to 550 before it breaks again, I don't know. Low odds here. Low odds here. This looks great. The chart looks great here today. And again, this is why you don't, uh, you cannot read directional trend looking at pivots. All right, because Apple didn't make a series of higher highs and higher lows all along the way here, and it's still in the downtrend. Okay, so this is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. Have a great day, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful bearish chart here in Apple. It's a short. If you'd like more information on the upcoming Golden Gap class, it's March 22nd and 23rd. You can email me and Melissa at the StockSwish.com for more information. And if you'd like to sign up, see you, everybody. Have a great day.